Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name's Justin, and today I wanna to talk about Enfuse. Now, this is a really interesting brand name that you might have heard of a couple years ago, and then you probably almost forgot about it by now. The Enfused Inspire series is a very interesting product, and it's essentially dead at this point. You can buy it on music store websites, but I'm guessing they're just getting rid of current stock. The price has gone down by $1,000 from its original price range, which is kind of crazy. So in this video, I wanna talk about why it flopped so hard and whether or not it's worth buying now that it costs $680. The whole idea was that they were gonna give you an all-in-one conversion package. So it comes with the drum module, the cymbals, and the drum pads. All you need is a crappy acoustic drum set, you put the pads on top of the drums, you don't have to remove a drum head and then drill in a sensor and then put a mesh head on top of that and then do all this stuff. No, it's like, it takes you five to 10 minutes to set this up, literally. There was actually a couple of things that really made me interested in this system. Number one was the very large rubber cymbals. This might not sound amazing now because we have the T50 ride cymbal, we've got the ATV 18 inch ride cymbal, but back then I don't think either of those things were even out yet. So this was like a, real, a really rare thing, a full set of acoustic sized rubber cymbals. Now one of the weirdest things about this whole system was the cable connections because these pads use a eighth inch four pole connection. Basically one of those eighth inch cables that has a third band on it. The kind of cable that you'd need to go from a microphone to the headphone jack of a cell phone. Another really interesting thing about the system though was the drum module. The drum module, to my knowledge, was one of the first, if not the first drum module that had a drum plugin as the thing that made the sounds. Like it's drum software inside of a box. Until the Mimic, we never really saw it done right, but this was like the first implementation of it. This thing was pretty unique because no one had really tried this before. They created a strange hybrid between a drum plugin and a regular classic drum module. Here's the pros and cons of a drum module versus drum software. With a drum module, you generally don't get sounds quite as good, but it's really easy to use. On drum software side, you basically get better sounds, but then you're gonna have to get the right hardware to make sure there's no latency, and you have to learn how to link them and learn how to use the software. So complexity, but better sounds. Basically, this system tried to bridge the gap between them and bring the best of both worlds. That's what it was attempting to do. So you had a drum module where you could edit the sounds and stuff, but you were kind of limited. You could just you know, put a global reverb on it, you could pitch the sounds, you could turn the volume up and down, and you could do some minimal EQing. But on the software side, you could create your kit and really go in detail, really form the sound that you want, and then export that to a thumb drive they included, and then plug that into the drum module. So you wouldn't have to use your laptop all the time, but you had the ability to really go in depth and the samples were high quality because they were from a drum plugin. It's BFD Eco and Fuse Edition. Not the full version of BFD, but still you're getting a drum plugin. Now it's definitely a cool idea that had benefits, but here are some of the downsides that came with using the system. There weren't a ton of sample layers because the sounds were high quality. They cut down on the number of sample layers on each individual pad, so that was a downside. Also, when you were creating a kit and exporting it to the thumb drive, it didn't have a very big uh, storage limit, so you kind of had to create a kit you liked, and then go make compromises until you can make that kit fit onto the thumb drive. Apparently this was a big deal because they actually made a video where a good chunk of this 15 minute video was just explaining how to get around this. You can either lower the sustain of all the sounds, make the cymbals ring out less, for example, or you could use less sounds, or you can go in there and just split up the sounds so the cymbals go to bank A and then the drum sounds go to bank B, and then you go reassign all the sounds inside of the drum module, or you can turn off reverb because that lowers the duration of the sample, and then you go and turn on uh, reverb inside of the drum module itself. The real problem is that their hardware just wasn't high-end enough to handle the sounds. So there's two basic ways to look at this. You can either say, look, they tried to add in drum software and also tie that in with the drum module, and they just ended up making it really complicated. Or you could look at it as, hey, you can just use the drum module, and then you have the ability to go deeper and really edit the sounds if you want to use the software option. You're not being forced to use that though. So here's my take on the overall sound quality. For me, when I sat down to play this at like a guitar center or when I was at Sweetwater Gear Fest, the sounds were maybe above average, they were okay, but they didn't blow me away. They sounded kind of overly perfect, they didn't sound very powerful, 
They didn't have too much of a personality to me. I just, there was nothing that really made me say, that is an awesome drum sound. It sounded better than the Roland TD-11 for sure, but I don't know if it's it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the other drum modules out there, which is sort of down to the fact that I only got to play the preset kits. With this sort of system, you can't really give a full opinion on it until you've spent a week with it, you know, editing the sounds inside of a computer and really playing around with it, finding your sound that you really like. But everybody has to judge it by the preset kits because that's what's on YouTube. And because they put the drum module in a freaking plastic box at Guitar Centers, they, they literally made it so you couldn't really adjust anything. And because there was only 11 kits to play around with, um, and it didn't basically, it didn't give me a great first impression or a great second impression. It was okay, but I didn't think it had a ton of personality to be honest. And again, I can't give a full opinion because I never really got a chance to edit the sounds and really see how far I could really push it. Okay, so now that we've gone over the finer details of the system, let's talk about why it flopped so hard. Now, this is all gonna be speculation, but I think there are three main reasons why this thing failed so miserably. Reason number one, it used rubber pads for the snare and the toms. Of course, the cymbals have to be made out of rubber, and I'm fine with the kick drum being made out of rubber, but you can't have rubber, snare, and toms and charge 1700 bucks for it. It's just not going to fly. And they didn't try to do something unique like Yamaha does with their DTX silicone pads. They're not mesh, but they feel really good. They're a different kind of material. They didn't go that route. They just went with straight rubber pads. They're fun to play for a while, but eventually they get boring and repetitive, and that's why people don't buy rubber pad drum sets anymore. Okay, so moving on to the second reason why this flopped so hard. They were charging way too much money for it. If you go in the comment sections of a lot of the Enfused videos on YouTube, you'll see time and time again someone saying, wow, this system looks kind of cool, but they're charging way too much. People just weren't willing to spend that amount of money on a rubber pad based drum set. And that's just the unfortunate truth of this system. Now the thing is, I can almost promise you that if they used mesh pads, people would have spent the money that they were charging. Like a lot of people would have spent 300 bucks on a cheap acoustic drum set, spent $1,700 on this conversion package, and they would have had a better drum set than a TD-25 for $2,000. Plenty of people would have gone for that deal. There are a couple of other things that drove away potential customers as well. Number one was the machine gunning. Some people just hate that, and it's caused by not enough velocity layers or round robin samples. Another problem was that it just seemed kind of complicated. Now there's two basic types of electronic drummers out there. There's the really hardcore electronic drummers that use drum software, and they do all this complicated stuff they want the highest quality sounds as possible. And then there's the other kind of electronic drummer that just wants to use the drum module. They know they're making a sound sacrifice, but the simplicity of the whole thing just makes them happy. And I've been both of those types of people. This system, while it used a drum module, it ended up being more complicated than just using a drum module because you still had to use a laptop. But if you're gonna use a laptop anyway, you might as well just use the biggest, best you know, drum plugins out there like Superior Drummer, but this thing, BFD Eco and Fuse Edition, made compromises. And then finally, the third reason why this flopped comes down to the sounds and how it all worked. Number one, a lot of people didn't love the sounds for the price range. Number two, people realized that there weren't many sounds in it to begin with, only about 170. Now I am always gonna be a fan of quality over quantity, but the problem is that no one can agree on what quality is so you almost have to have quantity so that people can find their definition of quality in your sound library. And then finally, a fourth bonus reason is the fact that back when this launched, you could either spend 1,700 bucks on the system or you could spend under $1,000 and get the Pearl True Track package, which is something very similar. I don't think the sounds are as good. I don't think as an overall package, it's quite as nice, but you could get something that kind of looks like the Enfuse system even though it wasn't as good, it was significantly cheaper by like 800 bucks. I'm really sad about how this whole thing turned out. And it's not because I don't like Enfused. In fact, I thought this was a really great idea when it came out. I played it, I enjoyed using it. I just found that it wasn't the product for me. And a lot of other drummers found that it wasn't the product for them too. And that's why it didn't sell so well. But the reason why I'm sad is that because no one bought it, we never got a chance to see version two, version three, version four. After they iterated a couple of new updates, it could have eventually been something really, really special but because no one bought the first one, we'll never see what the third version of it was. If we had to judge Roland by the Roland TD-10, no one would buy a Roland drum set, but we're judging it by the TD-50 now. So you see, like every generation it gets better, and I really, really wish that we could have seen a fourth generation of this product, but we probably never will, at least under the Enfused banner. The funny thing to me is that it's now at a decent price where some people might actually get value from this, because this is good for people that just need to practice sometimes. This is not permanent setup material. 
you wouldn't want to play this setup for five years in a row. But if you occasionally need to practice quieter than usual, throwing this set on in like 10 minutes is really not that bad. And then you can take it off the next day when you can play a little bit more loudly. It's actually kind of a cool system if they started out selling it at the price that it's at now. And it's funny also because the used market has not caught up to the brand new prices. If you look on like eBay and stuff, you can see this thing selling in used condition for more than the new prices because people haven't realized how much in price it's dropped. So if you're like me, you're probably wondering where Enfuse stands as a company. Like, are they basically just a brand name now that doesn't really have any people working behind it? Are they actually even manufacturing drum sets anymore? I don't have much insider knowledge on any of this stuff. I can only guess that they're just trying to sell off their their inventory that they have lying around and that's why they're trying to price it so low. And I can only guess that not many people work in Enfuse anymore, if any, because I know that one of the main people behind Enfuse now works for Alesis. So I can only assume that we'll never see a version two or version three of this pad configuration. And I'm not really happy about that. More competition is usually a good thing and they could have iterated their way to greatness. By the way, if you've ever owned one of these systems, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Okay, so now it's time to move ahead to eDrum update. Basically, this is where we're gonna revisit old videos with new information. So anytime I make a review about something, there's bound to be something that is inaccurate or maybe something has been improved since the time that I made the video. First of all, let's talk about Helenson. So I just did a review of one of their drum triggers, the ITM2. And it's a miracle that I remember the names of any of this stuff because it's all letters and numbers jumbled together. But that was a really, really interesting trigger because it had a lot of different features. You could flip the polarity, sensitivity controls, all this stuff. And one thing that has changed since the time that I made that video or something I wasn't aware of is that in the review, it was hard to mount this with certain kinds of screws because if the screw was too big, it couldn't fit through the gap and one of the screws that I had barely fit through the gap so I could actually mount it to my high tom. Well, it turns out in the new version of their drum trigger, that gap is wider, so it can work with nearly any screw that you throw at it, and that is no longer an issue. Just wanted to update you guys. Well, actually, the guy who makes Helenson drum triggers saw the video and left a comment on that. The second update I wanna talk about briefly is Mutsuya drums. So a couple of weeks ago, I did my review of the Mutsuya drums Element 2 shell pack, and I really liked the drum set but I was not a fan of the kick drum trigger. It's 3D printed, I didn't think it was very well made. I thought that it was too prone to breaking. In fact, they did have one early version break on me and they had to send me a generation two version of that trigger. But anyway, they actually just emailed me with a photo of the brand new version of their trigger. So they sent over the photo to let people know they're currently working on making the drum set better and better and they're listening to feedback. So those are the two updates that I have today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Should this segment remain? Should I have this in future videos? Let me know down in the comments below. See you guys in a few.